Hey everybody, welcome to the video. <laughs> welcome to the channel. My name is Mike and today we're working on a project that you guys have said we've needed for a long time. The catch is we kind of have to fabricate it ourselves, but let me show you what we've got to work with and uh, we'll get started on it. So this is what we're looking at. It is an old three-point hitch style forklift. You can see where the top link would connect. Where the three-point arms would come into place. See the hose, the cylinder, the mast. It's got three flies on it, or whatever you want to call them. And it's got the forks down here. Now the goal is to get this plate with the forks off and weld up some bracketry on it and make a set of quick attach forks to go on the 755. Step one is going to be to figure out how to get that back plate off of this mast. And I have no idea. So it looks like he comes back, that's the back plate there. You can see in there. And then these plates come back and they've got the rollers on it so it can ride on the mast. See how those rollers ride on the edge of that steel? And these two little fellers, that one and that one, they almost look like stops. So I'm gonna see if I can take those two off. And if we can't just slide that whole back plate right off the top end. We'll lay it down to do it, but let's see if we can get those loose first. All right. The odds that these come out, pretty good, right? Good news is my Allen keys are just as rusty as the bolts. So maybe with that power combined, oh, you don't fit. Actually, they look like they're gonna be loose though, don't they? Let's try this. Well, that's not going to do anything for us. Is it just rusty? Is that what? Oh, that's the right size. Yeah, we were right. Okay. Oh, I got to move you guys. Can you still see there? Kind of. I mean, we're getting a lefty motion here, right? <clears throat> Oh, that one's just hanging out. There we go. I'm looking at some of these welds and it looks like this was not originally, looks like this thing's kind of a homemade job too, which is kind of fun. Taking somebody's rigged up homemade job and rigging up our own with it. Wiggle in there, look at that. A fella is lucky today. So I'm just gonna flop this thing. So I think I'm gonna take the tractor and just flop it over. Make sure my hose is, not that it matters. We're not using this, I guess. That fitting's got a crack in it anyway. But, uh, oh heck, let's just flop her over. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna flop it over and see if we can't just pull this out the top side. Hopefully these don't slap up and rip the lines off the loader, huh? Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Okay. It tried. some gravel stuff in it. Boop. Like a lever maybe? I got a stick. Well I don't want the whole mass to go.
it all just pull off. Let's just go fast. I mean, let's just, let's just cut them. Right. Let's just cut them. a whole lot of imagination there I mean it's a set of forks we just gotta <laughs> all right that makes the feller happy so the next step is to weld up a bracket on the back side of this that the quick attach goes into get some measurements here Got plenty of clearance as far as that goes. This bar makes contact, but that's okay. I plan on trimming this up anyway, just to get some weight off of it. Weld a piece of flat on the outside like that. I think the next step is to try to get this bottom bottom bracket figured out and if you're trying to figure out my obsession with C channel and why uh, 
that's what I'm using. That's because it's what I had available to me at the time. Plus, I don't really have that much, I don't have the skills to sit down and actually sketch something out because I don't know what you can actually buy steel in. I'm new to fabrication. I don't know if I'm building something, I know what size lumber I can use, so I know what I need to order. I don't know what size steel comes in. That's what I'm trying to say. So I don't know how to order it in the, in the pieces I need. So as I start out, I just kind of buy one random big piece of steel and cut it up into what I need. But I'm sure as I get into fabrication more, I'll, I'll figure it out. Talk about a finger pinch point, huh? Okay. Let me get both these old rollers cut off here. Try to do the snap ring again and then try to cut the spindle off. I'm not sure that's what they meant by snap ring. There we go. That'll work fine. I went ahead and made a cut right here, and I'll explain that a little bit later on, but I want to go ahead and get that out of the way because I think it's going to be in the way of getting the grinder in once we get these brackets on. And there's this side. So let's get the tractor slid up underneath here, see if we can't get those brackets where they're at, maybe get a couple tacks on it. Turn my amps up a little bit. There we go. some beads on this. I'm gonna get it all locked in on those pieces. So this could be the next thing. I need to get PC channel here on each side for the plate on the quick attach to push into and that way it can lock into this. And I'll have to cut a hole for that pin too. I did find something over at the house I'm gonna try using. Uh, I believe it's called a pencil. Sold at a trade show once. Late breaking technology there. Uh, just a chunk of wood to set this up on. It's gonna ride like that. Right like that. That's probably overcomplicating it. We can probably just do this. 
and be fine. Yeah. And as far as this goes, Sure. I need to trim just a little bit in this corner here. See why that won't work. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take it. We'll put a couple tacks on that. And we'll move to the move to the other side. I'm not 100% sure what happened on this side. Okay. 16. Is that not what it is over here? Clearly it's not what it is because it's not there. Oi. How's that? You know, I know. I'm as shocked as you are. Um, Well, should we stare at it or should we fix it? I guess let's fix it, huh? Jeez, come on, bud, let's go. All right. I'm gonna cut that for you and cut that and see if I can't get in there with the last cutting wheel I got. Beat her down. We'll have to put something in there for filler. We'll get it to work. So that's kind of what I ended up with. I was able to cut it out, beat that side down, put a little filler metal in there, and get it welded together enough to test fit it. And I'll give you a close-up of that and how we plan to finish that out at the end of the video. And I will give you a heads up, this is also when my microphone died. I hadn't realized it yet. But this piece of metal we have on top, we gotta get the yep, fancy technique to get it to match the angle on the quick attach bracket. And I need to weld that cut closed. So I just did a stitch first on this side. I didn't want to run the whole thing and pull it a whole lot. And I took a wire wheel to it. I want to finish, touch these spots in right here. Touch those spots in? I don't know.
with those holes knocked out in the bottom, that's the last big thing I have to do before I can test it out. There's obviously some finishing touches we need to do on this, but I want to give it a test run, see how it's going to work. They lock in pretty easy, just like they're supposed to. No issues there. Give her the old wobble test. Hard to believe that loader has a little play in it. It's like we ever, ever used the thing. And picked up a random log. Now the goal at this point, this was New Year's Eve when I filmed this part. I was anxious to get back to the house and hang out with the girls for New Year's Eve. And I figured the next day I had the whole day to put the finishing touches on it and get a bunch of cool test shots and finish out the video for you guys. It was working really well. Look at that happy dude right there. He's happy. But uh, unfortunately, that fellow there doesn't know how to read the weather forecast. Look, I was just looking for things to pick up. Anyway, what did pick up was the rain. It rained all that night and had a 100% chance of rain all that day. I did go down, got some shots at the timber bridge of the creek flowing with the rain. And just downstream of the bridge, there's the downstream side of the bridge, obviously. And just downstream of the bridge, there's a little bit of a waterfall. That really only flows when it rains hard. Normally the water just disappears into the rocks. And went up to the pond to get some shots. Like I said, we had some pretty heavy rainfall, so I was curious how the overflow was handling it. And it was doing pretty good. Really no issues to report there. It looks good. I'm happy with it. And you can see it just kind of disperses itself over the hill into the woods. There's not really a ditch or anything there. It just works its way down the hill from there. But this is the close-up of what we ended up with. There's a pup out in the rain with me. She's dedicated, just like I am for this video. You can see we've got some welds to maybe grind out and touch up a little bit, but overall it's pretty good. There is a little adjustment in those forks. I can't slide them in if I need to. Here's what we ended up with here. I just took some C-channel, cut it down, matched the angle, used it for filler, welded the bottom and the top. And that gave me something to push the rod up against on the back side here. And eventually we'll come in and we'll fill all this in with about 37 pounds of rod. It shouldn't be that bad, but would have been better if I just got it right the first time. It's okay, though. I think it's going to work really well. I think it's going to work really, really well. There's a couple things I need to do to it yet. Let me get it hooked up and I'll show you what I'm talking about. still need to take some flat stock and weld from the top down to the bottom to box these ends in to help hold it in from that sideways motion and help me line it up whenever I'm hooking up. And that side ended up fitting really tight, looks good. This side still has a little bit of a gap in it, but that support bar that goes between, between the two loader arms still makes contact. So I'm thinking once I get some of that metal cut out, that'll close up tight for me. The other thing I need to do is just because of the style of fork, since it's only attached to the top, you can dump stuff onto piles with it, but they still just kind of flop around and I'd like them to be locked in, like a more modern style slider. That cut I made earlier, I'm going to finish that cut out, cut that section of plate out on both sides and then weld a little bracket that just hooks over that little lip and it can ride down in there and that'll keep that bottom part of the fork from being able to hinge out like that so it'll keep it a little tighter to the frame. Should be a little bit easier for me to work with the forks. And then we'll still notch this out so that fits in there tighter as well. So we have a little bit more work to do, but all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, I gave 350 bucks for this. If we're being honest with ourselves with the metal that we use here, the metal I'm gonna use for that little headache rack to protect the grill, the front end, the loader arms, the loader cylinders, that all needs protected. So with that little headache rack on there, the cutoff wheels, the welding rods, the propane, 
we're probably 450 bucks into this. And I'm not, I'm not mad about that at all. I think that's going to work out really well. I'm, I'm okay with that price. Especially considering the fact we still have all of that mast left to build the road drag with, which is a lot of material. And that cylinder, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Probably post it for sale, honestly. It's a two-stage cylinder. It's absolutely massive. I, I just don't know. I feel like I'm fairly creative on what to build. And I just can't come up with any solutions on how I would use it around the property. So I think I'm just going to put it on Marketplace. Sell it relatively cheap. This guy gave me a good deal on this. Might as well try to pass that forward a little bit. On the next video, we're going to take the forks and we are going to test them out a little bit. I got quite a bit of mess at the YouTube you have to clean up. Some of it tractor work, some of it not. You can see the foundation drain to YouTube yacht flowing strong. So that's good. That's working really well. And here's the floor. A lot of people want to see what it looked like after it rained. There's a couple places it holds water, but overall it looks pretty even. I love looking in there and seeing that floor and not seeing mud. These rocks are the bulk of the fork work I want to do. I want to get these rocks all moved up around the parking area too. And it's going to be a battle because we got the turf tires with the tractor. So you can see it's a little slick out. But that'll be the next video. That's what's coming up. I'm pretty excited about it. I'm ready to get this thing cleaned up and ready for the next step. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know the last part was a little awkward with the rain, but I didn't want to get the microphone out in the weather like this. So I figured I'd get you enough shots to finish off the video. You guys get the idea. I think we're on the right track. If you got any suggestions for these forks, well, leave them in the comments. I'd love to see them. I like trying things out. I like knowing what works for other people and what doesn't. Anyway, that's all we got on this one, guys and gals. I appreciate you watching. Hope you had a happy New Year's Eve. Hope your New Year's is off to a good start. As always, we'll catch you guys on the next one.